Are tech companies too big? And as end users, what can we as consumers do in order to curb the control that they have over our data? That's exactly the question that the federal government, or rather the FTC in particular, has been asking of the major tech companies this past week, namely Facebook. After all of the craziness that Facebook has been a part of in the last couple of years, the FTC has finally levied a $5 billion fine due to the lack of transparency and oversight on what the company and all of its third-party partners do with users' data. This week, Jaime Rivera and I get together for a discussion about not only the news regarding Facebook, but also a discussion about social media in general. About halfway through the show, we do talk about some of your comments from our previous episode, but that is how we dovetail into a general discussion about the power of social media in our lives and what we can do in order to curb what control it has over us. Make sure you stick around until the end of the episode to hear the question that we pose to all of you, listeners and viewers. And you can respond to that question using the comment section of the YouTube version. This is It's interesting that we're at this point now because uh, even though this might be a topic that is a little bit deep for a lot of people who are listening or watching on the YouTube side, I think it's really pertinent to actually talk about what we're going to talk about today because you, Jaime, are actually one of the big proponents of removing at least layers of Facebook from one's life. <laughs> I, I, I think that Facebook should not be allowed to buy another company. I'll tell you that much. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we're talking about this week, because um, one of the main stories to come out, not necessarily in the tech consumer space, but just sort of in the tech space in general, is that the FTC is... I'll use the word finally putting some of its power forward to look into companies like Facebook, Google, Amazon, Apple, mm -hmm. uh, and look into antitrust concerns. Because if there's one thing that we, I think we can all agree upon, it's that tech companies have become massive over yeah. the last few years. Um, Dude, like right now, the largest companies in the world are tech companies, pretty much. Yeah. Um, they, they like At least from, a con from an economical standpoint, at mm -hmm. least. Yeah, um, and I've, I've made my I've made my thoughts known in a number of different places that you know Silicon Valley and the Bay Area it's such a saturated place. There's so much money coming in there, and uh, it's crazy because you have app like I said, you have Apple, Google, and then of course Amazon is in a number of different places. And Lord knows Amazon has been in the news a lot recently. But today, or at least at this beginning part of the show, we're talking about Facebook. So the FTC has been looking into Facebook's privacy practices, but also their antitrust concerns, which means uh, for anybody out there that doesn't know, antitrust basically means uh, if a company not only owns too many things, but actually actively keeps competition from rising. Um, and in Facebook's case, I mean, just look at it. Facebook has Facebook. They have um, WhatsApp. They have Instagram. And yeah, in in all in a lot of these cases, Facebook bought that competition because that's what exactly what it was. It was competition. WhatsApp was competition yeah. to uh, Messenger. Instagram was competition to their photos applications and whatnot. And now uh, I think one of the reasons why this is coming up is because Facebook was actually announcing and working on their own cryptocurrency. Yeah, <laughs> the the thing about it is it's. I mean, in the case of Facebook particularly, it, did you see when they did the congressional uh, hearing against Mark Zuckerberg? Uh, yes. And I mean, it was a very memeable thing. So for a lot of people that are, that are like in our generation, uh, it pretty much came off that my, Mark Zuckerberg is <laughs> he's a robot in a way. But yeah, uh, that was the congressional hearing. He, and he had to explain to the people who were questioning him basically how the internet works and i think that's one of the that's one of the big problems right now why why did you start removing all of those facebook layers you still use whatsapp i know that you're a whatsapp guy but everything else it's not that i'm a whatsapp guy it's just i need to communicate with family and friends yeah. uh, most of them are latinos and what we use mostly is whatsapp mm -hmm. it's that's just the way it is um i was actually of the people that paid for whatsapp back in the day I don't know if you remember, but you used to pay a dollar for it. No, I didn't remember. <laughs> yeah, when WhatsApp came, well, you, you, you came in late to WhatsApp, yeah. but when WhatsApp came out, <clears throat> you paid a dollar for it. Um, and I found a dollar like that was like the first adult that was like the first dollar app that I ever purchased. And I was like, this is not bad. You know, the service is actually good. People can communicate. And for me, it was a replacement for BBM, if you remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so people transitioned from BBM 
into WhatsApp in Latin America mostly. Uh, because the advantage of, of WhatsApp was that it was cross-platform, whereas BBM forced you to have a BlackBerry. And obviously that was not the cool thing back in. It, it was transitioning into something different. So the, the, the cool thing is, you know, the values that WhatsApp had back in the day. You know, we're not going to give you ads. You just pay a buck and that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, and the problem is, you know, the moment that they that Facebook started buying things, like I was a really big fan of Instagram because it was a simple social network where you just posted photos. And that was it. Um, but then Facebook jumps in and, you know, the, the difference between these services is even Facebook to a certain degree was not was not necessarily something I, I did not like before it went public. The problem is the moment that it went public. And obviously now it's the challenge to make money. Yeah. And be, because of that challenge to make money, that mentality has permeated into these other services where right now they're already looking for ways to make money on WhatsApp. Uh, we've already seen the ad uh, platform that's come to Instagram. Mm-hmm. But I, I feel that the biggest problem with Facebook per se is, you know, it's just how Facebook has prostituted communications. Uh, and I, I think that that's like the adequate word to use. It's we have a platform and the, the you know, the product is the user. We are selling you a community and you can do whatever you want with them. And that yeah. whatever you want with them has ended up costing a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Like the problems with Cambridge Analytica. Like, you know, the problem is what happens when the when you lose your sense of uh, principles, I guess is the word. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I, you think that's a, being, I think that's a relevant word for sure. Yeah, well, once you stop, once you lose the whole concept of, okay, why does your platform exist? Your platform was born over the concept of helping people connect. Mm-hmm. And so if it's, are you still a platform that's trying to help people connect or are you a platform that's selling your infrastructure and, you know, the whole idea, not infrastructure, but, you know, your your product, you're selling your product and you're forgetting that you want them to connect. What well, you are now serving is a way to sell them something. Yeah. You know, that that's when things get lost. I, I feel that one of the things that I liked about, uh, you know, I guess it's in the case of Instagram, they weren't trying to sell you anything. One of the things that I like about what we do, particularly in YouTube, is we're not trying to sell anything to anybody. We get a product for review. If we like it, we say we we like it. If we don't like it, we don't. Mm-hmm. You know, and we don't do we don't do paid reviews. That's one of the things, and I I love that concept. But we're not trying to sell anything. Yeah, you know. But my my problem with Facebook is that. And obviously, the more it continues gobbling services, the more it prostitutes other really good services into becoming literally sluts for the media. You know, it's 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 one of those things where it's like we're we're trying we're using these new core sets of sluts to be able to make more money, and that's really what upsets me about everything that's happening with Facebook. And I think that's the crux of why the FTC is moving forward with the antitrust concerns in particular, is because as Facebook uh, scoops up all of these different services, it just gives it that much more control over so many different forms of any one user's data. So, which is which is something that shouldn't happen. I remember that they asked Mark Zuckerberg, and I, I apologize for interrupting. No, no, you do. You. Uh, 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 but w- w- during the sen- the during the Senate hearing, they asked them if they had a monopoly. Yeah, and and Ma- it's funny how Mark, he, there's everything that he responded is correct. Technically, he they don't have a monopoly. Anybody, the, like the internet is open to everybody. And everybody can create whatever they want. The thing about it is, in the case of Facebook, Facebook has something very interesting that the last time that I remember the concept was back in the days when I worked in the airline business. Because, like, I worked at an airline, which was, it was a major airline, but what people didn't know is that it was a 96-company consortium. And one of the may we, I remember that we owned six different airlines that made no money. Their whole purpose is what we used to call weed killing. Literally, the whole purpose of these companies was not to make money, but to not allow future competition to grow. Mm -hmm. So did we have a monopoly or not? Yes, we did. Yeah. Arguable. Everyone always says that about airlines, too. (laughs) Exactly. And so Facebook is the perfect example of a company that's either bought services or has used these services as weed killers. Mm -hmm to not allow competition to grow. 
MySpace is dead. High Five is dead. Every <laughs> single five. possible, yes, every single possible social network that could compete with Facebook is dead. Yeah. So how about the how about the usage of people's data? Because you brought up Cambridge Analytica before, and obviously, so everyone out there, you probably have gone through these layers of Facebook where if you were to do the sign in using Facebook uh, apparatus on any other website. It'll bring you to Facebook and say that this particular app has access to X amount of data or whatever. Like it's going to pull your username and some and other things. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, when it came to the Cambridge Analytica stuff, uh, there were like third party companies that were taking that information, actually creating profiles on users, which were then used yeah. for whatever purpose you want to say, like whether it's nefarious or not. Obviously, it was used in a lot of different ways. But yeah. the main crux behind this whole and it turned out to be a violation worth $5 billion, but that's the most recent violation. Um, the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, actually imposed a $100 million penalty. That one, I feel, is way too low. But all of these um, all of these penalties are based upon the fact that Facebook was not more upfront. They weren't more transparent about where the data was going and how it was actually being used. So yeah. where do you draw the line? Is it is it based upon uh, transparency of how the data is being used or that the data is being used at all? Is it chicken or the egg in that sense? Okay, so the biggest problem is here's the I, I think that there's a there's a big problem and it's a problem of principle. Um, have you ever, when you're logging into Windows, have you noticed that the moment that, that you're registering for Windows on a, on a Microsoft, you know, on, on a PC, it says, do you accept the end user license agreement? Mm -hmm. And then at the bottom, it's like, you can decline, but then there's no Windows. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And that's, no. and that's true on all forms of software. Like that's the first screen is the EULA. And if you say no to it, you just can't install it. And there are some people so, who have said no and actually got refunds on it, but the, 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 the crux of the argument remains that you don't get that software. So here's the thing. I feel that certain companies, this is like um, right now, for example, in the United States, things that I love about, about this country is, for example, if you apply for a job, Companies cannot solicit your photo and the resume. They cannot solicit your. They cannot provide information. You can. They cannot ask you for things like your age. Like they cannot ask for your photo. In Honduras, where I'm from, dude, if you if you don't provide photo or age, they won't. They simply won't receive you in in the interview mm. in the job interview. Whereas in the United States, it's illegal. And so why is it? Why is it that these companies can't do it in the United States? Because it's discrimination. Mm -hmm. It is a form of discrimination. And so I love that there are rules for things like this. And I feel that, that you know, every single judicial and lawmaking system should impose that companies like Facebook do not force people to accept Things that are, you know, that could help them violate principle. Yeah. Like, they sh you shouldn't be asked. Like, I saw it last week in the podcast that you guys did with TK. I read the, you know, you guys read everything that was in the license agreement with FaceApp. Mm -hmm. You know, companies should not even be allowed to request you these things. Yeah. We go back. What is the purpose of this company for? The purpose of Facebook is to help people connect. Mark Zuckerberg said it in their in their Senate hearing. So if the purpose is for people to be able to connect, why do they need a ton of stuff? Why do they need access to either your photos or your location? Like if it's because they want to help you connect with people that are close to you, it's okay, it's fine. But then there should be, uh, you know, legal boundaries that don't allow them to do more yeah. than just this. So maybe the data is only for the most part, used or is available to the people that you want to connect to rather than some yeah. random person in a whole different country or in a whole different right. place who who's using your data for God knows what. <laughs> right. And so, this, listen, every single industry in the world has boundaries. Yeah. Every single industry, if you want to start an airline, you have boundaries over what you can and what you can't do. If you start a transportation company, you have boundaries. If you're a transportation company, you can't sell food. Like you, you, re you are required to request different permits. And so I feel that the deregulation of the internet, you know, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm, you know, let's not go into the topic of net neutrality or anything, but 
I do feel that it needs a certain level of regulation, not over what customers can consume, mm-hmm. but over what companies can request from from you know from the customer. If you are going to create an app service that's designed for dating, for example, you should not request certain things from the person. You know, why do you need access to their full camera roll? Why oh, not yeah. just the person on a photo to photo basis provide just the photos that they want and not access to the whole thing? Yeah. And I think that was one why? of our, that was one of our things about FaceApp last week with me and TK was that it might be one thing that the app does not look through your whole camera roll, but and then here we go, going back to the end user. How much should the end user know of what they're doing? Because if you're in what's if you're in uh, not WhatsApp, if you're in FaceApp and you're just giving up all of your photos just for the sake of novelty, you're willingly giving yeah. FaceApp all that data. Yeah. So that's the reason why last week's show we were just talking about how oh, like people need to be a little bit more aware of that kind of thing. Because in your case, you did it one time, you made a thumbnail for the daily, uh, and then you took it off. We, but, we did it on the yeah, show, but, took it off. Like, <laughs> but, what, but what we did is we grabbed the phone. Um, no, so what we did is we literally used a photo from from taken from a camera mm-hmm. and we used the phone that wasn't like it was literally it had no account like no basic accounts no camera roll that was the only photo that it had yeah. because I, I dude i i i seriously don't trust the service i don't trust the service i i have a problem man like i feel that it's it's truly a problem that it should companies should be controlled there should be regulation. So how? So your react? Well, I got a little bit of your reaction before the show about this uh, as we were getting ready for uh, for this broadcast. Um, Five billion dollar fine. It, it, it didn't seem like. Are you serious? <laughs> you, like, what is the Facebook market cap right now? Can you can you Google? Oh, it? I, I okay. Let me see if I can find. Um, Hold on. Let me see Facebook. Because this is the thing. Um, one of the reasons why there was some outrage about the fact that the value was five billion dollars and there's other things that do that are happening at facebook because of this uh investigation so so facebook's market cap right now is 567 billion that's the thing even with a huge fine that points to the fact that facebook did wrong it's a drop in the bucket literally (laughs) quite literally 567 billion dollars Dude, I mean, I'll give you an example. I used to work for UPS, for example. Let me show you what the market value for UPS, which owns trucks, airlines, it's $83 billion. How could it be possible? How could it be possible that a service, that a website, literally a website, is worth what? 10 times more than an airline? Yeah. It's because, like, you know what? It's because of, it's it's because of, uh, uh, um, the, just the size of the market, because you know what? For Facebook, it's the world. It's the app. It's yeah. the entire world. And I, I, to- the- I totally understand that. Yeah. But then we should find these companies. Like, let's be let's be real. How much did the 2016 elections cost the United States? Mm. And not even just it's- that. You have the U.S. And I could make arguments about the way that Facebook actually curbed the election in the Philippines. Yeah, you know? and then it's true for a lot of other countries. Um, you know, but without getting too far into the political stuff, um, you know, there's there's just the five billion dollar fine. That's that's one thing. Uh, but there's yeah. also now a committee that is uh, made up of people that are from these agencies and also out of people from Facebook who are actually going to be a little bit more discerning about how they use data, how they how they handle privacy, and how. They are transparent about it, which basically means that you can't have you know any one person or any small handful of handful of people like Mark Zuckerberg making all those decisions. So there's more yeah. there's more oversight, and I suppose that's that's a good thing. But like you were saying earlier, the the fact that they're using the data at all is the problem. You know what the biggest problem is that these committees are made by people who are the perfect target for Facebook. Fair that- people people <laughs> over people over fifty like. You, you can't, I'm sorry, you know, I'm not trying to be discriminatory. It's just my dad's knowledge of Facebook is so low mm-hmm. that he's got like 10 accounts created because every single time that he switches phones, whenever he breaks one or whatever, he thinks that he has to create another account. He doesn't know that it is, that his account is ported from one. He could just simply sign in with the same. That's his level of knowledge of Facebook. Mm. And these are the people that are making the rules and that are becoming part of this committee of regulations. The problem is you, you can't. 
I feel that, you know, internet companies should be treated like every other standard company in many things. But then there are certain principles that don't apply to an internet company because their restrictions are completely different. Yeah. And so I feel that you need people that understand the internet to be to be writing the rules. Yeah, fair. All right. So doing a bit of a mid break right now, uh, we don't have an ad for this week. So we're just going to get into our recurring segments. Uh, The first one that we're going to do is just respond to some of the comments from last episode. And there was a lot. Um, You know, we we were hoping for more people to be listening and tuning in. Hopefully that would be the case now. But remember, share the podcast with whoever you feel should be watching it on YouTube or listening to it in their podcasting apps. And on the YouTube side, we have these very comments. Uh, So Marilyn Puig already said that, you know, it was a good podcast, a lot of food for thought. That's exactly what we're trying to do here. So thank you so much for that, uh, for, for that vote of confidence. Um, now we have David who got the top comment. Uh, we use apps owned by Facebook on phones running on an operating system controlled by a company that makes money by harvesting data to sell ads. Google. <laughs> Face app won't do anything different. It's news because it's a Russian app and according to media, Russia bad. <laughs> like... Is that I felt like that was a little bit true. Like there's there's a stigma with Russia and China in particular. Anything coming out of those yeah. two countries, there's already immediate scrutiny. Let's start. Let's stop using smartphones then. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, he had he had more to say. Here's the deal. Russia has strong privacy laws, much like the rest of Europe, and you never actually sign the terms of service. According to Russian privacy laws, Face app would need your express consent to be able to do any of that stuff with your content. And the irrevocability clause on the terms of service is actually not allowed by Russian law. So the entire clause yeah. is actually invalid. Yeah. I didn't know that part. A lot of, a, a, a lot of companies, a lot of countries have that. But the, we go back to the topic of, like, for example, in Honduras, you can't just accept something electronically, for example. Mm. Like, you, li- you expressively have to sign a document. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. And so it's, it's hilarious. I don't know, man. It's, I... God, but would listen. that affect the EULA though? Would that would that would that work with the EU, uh, EULA? Like they could try to they could try to sue you, mm-hmm. <laughs> but then you know it's like I didn't sign anything. It's like how how do you have proof that it was actually me signing something mm-hmm. online? How is it that, that somebody just knows my password on my email? Like it's the problem is, dude. Do you realize just how archaic? Our systems are into regulating the internet. Yeah. Think about it. Or internet companies. And I think that there's, listen, the, the, the UN was born over the necessity to regulate aviation. It was born for many reasons after the war, but the first convention was the Chicago Convention, and it was mainly to regulate aviation. Why? Because it was a world problem. And unless you establish rules to be able to control it, It was going to be too complicated for somebody from the United States to fly to Europe, for example. How is it that pilots in the United States that speak English would be able to speak to to control towers in France? Mm -hmm. And so important things like defining the fact that English is the world language for aviation. I don't know if you knew this, but it is. Every single pilot speaks English by law. Oh. By law. The only country that requires you, that requires you to speak Spanish is Spain but then when it comes to control towers and pilots, they're forced to speak English. But mm-hmm. a lot of these things came out of a convention that was born in 1946. And so if there is one thing that I feel needs another UN convention is the Internet. Yeah, I think I agree with that because we need to be able to actually define the lines. And yeah, it's the wild, wild west uh, right now. It, it is the wild west. And I, you know, I, I get it. You know, Facebook services like these... They started off being cool. I found it so nice to be able to find friends from many years ago that I hadn't heard about. I loved Facebook for that the moment that I opened it in 2008. Mm -hmm. And I started using it a lot. And then I started noticing how because the service generally makes money out of your level of commitment to it, Dude, they have so many ways to lure you in. They have so many ways to make you addicted to their service. And guess what? People are not productive. It's funny how I have... It's The word is not funny. I apologize. But I have a lot of friends that are currently unemployed or have issues with their employment. And what do they spend doing most? Instead of going out there and looking for a job, they're on Facebook. Right. You know? it's it's there's, it, there's a big problem over the level of liberty 
that these companies are allowed all for the sake of making money. Mm. And that, that actually a connects problem. a little bit to this next one. Uh, Pablo okay. Cassiano. Um, I actually don't think it ma- Okay, so this is him talking, by the way. I actually don't think it matters much. Cities all over already have massive surveillance systems installed, scanning everyone's face for the sake of national security. We will not be able to opt out of it all. Giving it away easily on a phone doesn't help. But what we do in a world full of tech, that's what we live in. Uh, it's either join or just go dark and not participate in any of it, which would honestly be hard to do. Think about it. What... I have a really good friend who is going through issues of divorce and so many problems. And so her ex-husband is now getting remarried to somebody that works with her. And so she was going through horrible depression over everything. And so guess what? I'm like, you know what you need to do? You need to get out of Facebook. You seriously do. What what would happen if you did? Would you die? Mm Mm-hmm. Like, would it really, because I feel that you're going through depression right now, and you're going through depression, why? Because all your friends in common are his friends in common as well. You just see all and of so that. And so, you're seeing everything that's happening with the guy's wedding, and he just sent her flowers, and this and that. This is only making it worse for you. Word of advice, get out of social media. You're not going to die. Buy a book. Mm-hmm. You know, you can binge watch a series or do something with your life. I don't know if you noticed, but I actually, after my trip to Japan, you know, being in Japan uh, opened my eyes about a ton of things. The first one was the silence of the trains. You remember that I mentioned that to you. Yep. And they were clean. Yeah, clean, and, and but silent trains. It, for me, it was just shocking to see how many people were on Instagram. Oh, yeah. That's right. On their phones. I had I had never noticed how society is stuck on Instagram. And surely I, I posted a few things during my Japan trip, but then I took two weeks off. I tried to take two weeks off, you know, Instagram in general because, dude, we're not productive. Like, social media is strong enough. Like, they use psychological... It's psychological warfare to keep you locked into their services. They're making money. How much money are you making? I told her, like, how much money are you making out of just looking at your ex's photos with his new wife? This is only hurting you. Yeah. You need to get a life. And for many people, I, I'm i going to tell you, I, I went through I went through depression as well over certain issues that I went through years ago. And the first thing that I realized was the first I need to get a life. And it started by back then I had to literally cancel my social media temporarily and, you know, just do something with my life that's not living other people's lives through the window that I have on my phone to look at what they're doing. What is Instagram stories? What are Instagram posts? It's just a window to see what other people do. Yeah. And the and, and so all this generates is envy. For a person that's not mature... All it does is generate envy. And I'm really loving the generation of my son, for example. Diego doesn't have Facebook. He's got Instagram and he posts something once every, like, I don't know, once every two, three months. Mm -hmm. He is, I don't know what it is about his generation, but they don't really care about social media. They cared about Snapchat and then, you know, Snapchat is now dying off. They care about, it seems like Gen X or Gen Z rather, Gen Z, um is caring more about like sh- showing rather than digesting i guess so they, they they get on snapchat they show off a little bit they get on instagram they show off a little bit twitter definitely but it's less about being stuck digesting all of it and being on facebook and instagram for hours and hours on end thank god it seems but they're yeah. more about like you know selfie get it out there get the likes uh instead of just like watching everybody else's stuff that's more of a millennial thing is being the digester the the consumer of social media i feel like um yeah which you're you know what it's funny um i was looking for the comment i think it was on the episode from two weeks ago that someone said yeah you know when oh yeah it was from the episode when all of the services went down the one that you and i did someone said you know what like it's a good thing walk outside (laughs) like that's what yes they said i love i love going into restaurants that have a sign that says we don't have wi-fi talk to each other oh 
I like that sign too, actually. Yeah. You don't see it a lot in other. LA, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> and it's it's one of those things. I walk into restaurants, I walk into places, people are on their phones. You know, there's more to life than than and it, it this is probably it's it's one of the difficult things about what we do as well because like we walk a fine line in between. Yeah. If we don't do social media, you know, obviously we don't grow. <laughs> yeah. Or we don't have other means to distribute the product that we do, but in the end, I like what we do to a certain degree because we're not we're we're to a certain degree providing insight into what's going on and to a certain degree providing an educated opinion because we're exposed to all these products and we know the difference between one and the other and it helps consumers make a smart decision over what to buy and what not yeah, this is what value we do. in the content exactly so we're not creating content just to have use like literally you're gonna watch our video if you're interested in buying something or if you're an enthusiast mm -hmm. this is what you like you know and, and a lot of people have different enthusiasms and if you like but us then, personally that's just a perk that's a bonus <laughs> that is a bonus but but if you think about it there are a lot of people that are into creating content just for the sake of showing off mm -hmm. there is no value in it there's nothing that you're getting out of it and so like i told my friend listen i know a lot of people that are going through depression right now and it has i i will i will single-handedly say i have a friend of uh, not a friend of mine an uncle of mine uh, who passed away two years ago. And I can, it's not that I can bet you, I am sure 100% that he passed away because of Facebook. Mm. He was diagnosed with HIV. And after he was diagnosed, he went into horrible depression because he comes from Honduras where it's extremely important that you live a life of show, that you, people live out of appearances. And he fell into this horrible depression because and I remember when I talked to him last, the whole topic was, what am I going to tell my friends? And I'm like, you don't have to. You don't have to. The world has changed. You don't have to. Yeah. You don't have to express to the world what your sexual orientation is or if you're in a relationship you don't need to. How does that benefit you in any way? It does not. So if you have a disease, there are so many ways for you to care for yourself today. You you don't have to die from this. Dude, he literally fell into depression that nobody could pull him out of. Mm. All because he was worried about what people would think of him and if people would discriminate him over his disease. And it's it's so sad. I know I've known of cases of people that go through this. Social media does not help you. It does not. And I feel that society is only going to go on a on a on a negative downhill if we continue allowing companies to do whatever they want with with consumers. If we continue allowing companies to use psychology against users in order to make them addicted to their product just for the sake of making money, what is going to happen to society? Yeah. Because it's going to become, and you know what? I even think that you know, based upon the comments from the last episode, we can just continue this discussion because this is again, this is I feel this is a very important topic, and it is. And honestly, it's that is that is sort of the that's the underlying factor here is that because Facebook and all these other companies are now being scrutinized, we're, we're we have to take a really good long hard look at how we have become addicted to all of these things and why our addiction has actually made these tech companies has made all of these companies become so large and to the point where yeah. it's a circular problem because it's a cyclical problem i should say because while we are allowing the companies to have so much revenue that they get bigger and bigger they're also finding ways of continuing to get bigger which means they create like you said all of this like the the this this um prostitution of communication in the sense that yeah. they're actually finding ways of making us even more addicted they're making us junkies and yeah i mean it's funny that people like us who are in this industry we're the ones that are advocating in our own lives to actually get off of it a little bit and and, and yeah and the problem is we're losing principle like today for example i got see you know the Mueller report happened two days ago the the whole senate the hearing, hearing yeah and and so for some reason i'm i've started to get on my Google feed, I've started to get stuff from Fox News. <laughs> and it's one of those things where I remember one of the titles that I saw, and I'm like, you know, 
a lot of companies have lost principle over how they manipulate titles in order to drive people against Mueller. Or and, one side and the other. Yeah. It's, or one mm. side and the other. And so it's one of those things where I'm like, my God, like this is a very, very big problem. It's, you know, the level of cynicism in communication lately is off the roof. Mm-hmm. It's off the roof. So it's a general problem and and true. Every, the, like there is a right to freedom of speech and I, I love it and I believe in it. Uh, I'm not saying that there should not be a right to freedom of speech. I feel that manipulation of information for the sake of winning is a problem. Mm. So I think for the last like minute or two on here, because I think I think we've we've gone pretty far with this topic and I love I love how far we've gone. Give let's give our viewers and listeners at least a little bit of insight from our own experiences. Like I, I am on all of the, the the social media websites. I guess the only thing that I would say is like be in it for yourself in a way. Because if you notice, if you look at the history of my Twitter over the last two, three years, it used to be a place that I put up all of my content. I'm like, hey, come follow me, blah, blah, blah. But now, now I just use Twitter as sort of like a comedic thing. I just I, I tweet whatever the hell I want now. I just, I, I think I tweeted last week something about a wrestling show, and then everyone was like, "What are you talking about?" And I'm like, "It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter what I'm talking about." I love about. my my son says that he loves Twitter, and one of the reasons he says it is because he loves the fact that there is no, like, it's literally just a place where you can rant or say whatever you want, and there is literally nothing more than that. That's mm-hmm. it. That's it. So yeah, I I agree with you about Twitter. I just. I don't know if you were done with what you were saying. I apologize. Oh, uh, well, just on my end, like I'm, that, that's that's literally how I use Twitter, Instagram. I view it more as like a business thing now because obviously, you know, if we're, being influ- quote unquote influencers, you need to be able to show that you actually engage in that world. Facebook, I hardly yeah. ever use, you know, and I think it's easier to actually vilify Facebook and actually say, get off of that. While Twitter and Instagram are kind of the, they're like the big ones in terms of just sort of influence and engagement. Uh, but that's just how I view social media these days. Like I, you, you'll notice uh, across all of my media platforms, even on YouTube, that most of my content comes out in bursts, and it's usually based around like experiences and travel. You know, if I'm mm-hmm. if I'm just in this office for like two three weeks on end, I probably have nothing to say, and I try my best not to have anxiety over the fact that I don't have a whole lot to share and say. So I feel like mm-hmm. people need to get that anxiety out of their heads uh, because that's how addiction to posting happens, you know? Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. It's a good question. I feel for me, I guess I'm going through a, a crossroads transition or whatever you can call it mm-hmm. where... Because, oh, sorry to interrupt, I, but like I remember when you started to say that you were getting off of Facebook, a lot of us were like, whoa, yeah. you're, like the, yeah. you're like the only one. <laughs> well, it's... Over time, I've learned that a lot of things are a consequence of the the social liberties that exist today. The last thing that I want to that I want to be is literally in Spanish we call it piedra de tropiezo. Like, how do you call when somebody like if you're the stone that people trip on? I think that that's it. (laughs) Yeah, I have a nineteen. I have a nineteen year old, a thirteen year old, and a nine year old. Mm And I guess the example that I have to set for them is, am I here just to sell myself and make money? Or am I here to, you know, to have them be proud of me and whatever it is that that's achieved and everything? It's I've ha- I'm having a lot of trouble with social media because I'm noticing the negative effects of it. And, you know, just like everything, you know, just like divorce in the 1970s, before, once it became legal... In, in absolutely every society, the biggest problem is when things become legal at a at a federal level, and therefore, if not, if there was no like test bed where you can see the effects of something in people, like you know medical trials and a lot of things, you can't see the consequences until later. Mm. And so I've I've come to see. It's funny how we have medical clinical trials for medications, and yet these are tools to depress people. And, and there are no trials over the social effects of a product and we just allow companies to do whatever they want. You know, I love s- services like Uber. I hate how much they pay drivers 
And so I have lately decided to stop using it as much unless I I can find a better option. I learned how much they pay drivers, dude, and I'm like, what the? Yeah. I, you know, I'm sorry. that That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that Uber drivers are getting paid so little. And so these are genius ideas that are being prostituted over the concept of how much money these corporations want to make to look good in their IPO or their yep. stock. But if we're if we're literally screwing people over over these ideas, then you know the whole purpose of Uber gets thrown down the toilet because of this. And so I, I know that I'm going a little broad, but it's just I've come to a point where I've learned that there is nothing positive about social media. That surely you can connect with people, and that's all nice. Mm-hmm. But I guess I don't, I don't want to be part of a system that is. If I'm going to post something, it's going to be something positive. If I share a photo of something that I saw in, in Japan, it's because I found it beautiful. If you notice, I try to post as little photos of me as I can. I try to post. And it's funny because that's completely against the general positive things of how to grow on Instagram. Yeah. You know what? It's against I'm the fine. algorithm, right? <laughs> I'm fine with 30,000 followers. You know, it's, <laughs> I, 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 I accept that I don't have a million followers. That's just fine. If I take photos of somewhere that I liked in Japan... It's not because I'm looking to grow on Instagram. I just really want to share something beautiful that I just saw. Totally, yeah. So I think you know. And so, oh, sorry, go for it. Please, please, no. What were you? You think what? Well, I was just going to say. I think that I think that's a very pertinent point because um, I guess just like last time with TK, we both came to a conclusion that people should just be more mindful about how they engage in all of these things, and not only yeah. just for the sake of other people who might be viewing your content, but also you know how you view your own data. Um, you know, and and I hate that I have to put it that way because how you view your information, how you view what it is you share to the world. Um, I hate that we have to call it data, but that's just the world we live in now. You know. It is. It is. <laughs> but it's one of those things where, first of all, I have learned how it affects you. Oh, my God. Like, I, I remember that I went through a breakup uh, recently. Uh, not recently. And I remember just, you know, just continuing to follow that person and seeing that person have a life afterwards. Dude, that stuff it messes drives with you, right? you nuts. It messes with you. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like... I am. Uh, I remember the moment where I'm having a drink in a bar, and I'm like, I am such a moron. What the hell am I doing here? It, like breaking up a decade ago was easy because you didn't have to see that person again. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, but in the world of social media, it's like, oh, but I'm going to look so bad if I unfollow her. And so I've loved that certain services have things like the mute, like the mute thing. Yeah, where I don't have to put up with these kinds of things. But you know it's it's one of those things where the more I the more time goes by the more I realize that my life is better reading a book mm-hmm. that my life is better meeting up with friends and having a drink or doing a barbecue um and actually it's funny how LDRs you know long distance relationships have flourished because of social media they have but the biggest problem is you know how a lot of these relationships over time have ended up collapsing. I would, I'd happen to me over the problem that there are certain people that, to a certain degree, it's like if their communication through social media becomes enough. Oh yeah, no, that's terrible. Like you have to be able is, to talk on a deep level every day. Yeah, but the the problem is, I feel that relationships should not be just about what you can communicate over a chat. Yeah, exactly. Like intimacy, connection. Like, all these things, dude, I remember that I, I saw this article. Uh, there was a study conducted where they learned that that the amount of sex millennials are having is significantly lower <laughs> than every other generation. And it's because of the porn industry. Uh, it's because social skills have dropped significantly. Mm-hmm. And therefore, people just don't want to deal with the concept of courting. Like, guys don't want to deal with the concept of courting a girl, which is what I was raised to do or learned to do. So just think about how negative the lack of social interaction is becoming to society. Mm-hmm. And that that's kind of where all these companies are now, that they are fostering that and they make money off of it. They make money off of all and, of it. And I'm going to leave you with an example. If you remember in Japan, you remember you know very little social interaction and so many problems. 
how how hard how high was the suicide rate? Do you remember that? Yeah, that's uh, yeah. It's... It was huge. Mm-hmm. It was huge, and so I'm concerned. Like, shoot, I'm concerned for my kids. I don't want my kids to grow up like that. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't want my kids to grow up like that. I want my kids to have a functional childhood where they have friends and they want to go play ball and they want to meet up to play soccer every now and then. I don't want them to grow up where Fortnite is the world and that's it. Yeah, that's a very that's that's a very good example, and um, that's I think where we can pass off the question to all of you that are listening or watching this. Um, our first half of the show was about Facebook in general, so let's ask you: like, do you think that the uh, do you think that the not only the fine but also the various policies that were levied on Facebook are enough? Uh, given the track record of Facebook over the last couple of years, it's not a great looking track record, honestly. So the both of us here kind of feel like it's not enough whatsoever. So Facebook focusing on the first question. Second question is about the sort of we we uh, we dovetailed into a talk about social media in general. So how we're going to continue that discussion. How do you feel about social media in your general life, in your personal life? How much do you try to be in it or out of it on a daily basis? And I think that would be a good place for all of you to get into the comment sections and actually give us a your responses and then we'll talk a little bit more about it next week when we respond to some of your comments on the show you remember when they split up what, what was it bell or at&t what was it that the united states split up i think it was pack bell and that that gave birth to didn't that give birth to at&t yeah and and a ton of other companies you know there comes a point where companies are too big they need to be split up they need to be split up because if not this really affects uh, in the case of surely it affects jobs, commerce, and whatever you want, lack of competition. But right now we're we're in a bigger problem. We're not talking about uh, somebody that's selling you a phone or a company that's selling you a car. We're talking about a company that controls influence, a company that controls literally how society behaves. Dude, that's mind-boggling. Yeah, for sure.